Hello, y'all. My name is Ahmed, and this is The Anthropologist. And today, I'll be talking about my own research that I've been conducting the past two years. And the title of my project is called Trauma, Emotion, Identity, and Belonging, The Case of Second-Generation Bosnian-Americans. For this research, I've used a semi-structured interviewing method to interview 10 second-generation Bosnian-Americans. The ages of my participants ranged from 19 to 24, three of them were male and seven of them were female, and they all currently reside in the U.S. I have gathered my participants through social media and snowball sampling, and the interviews were conducted over Zoom due to the protocols of UCLA and COVID-19 restrictions. This series of TikToks will focus on the transmission of trauma and negative emotions. However, I would like to acknowledge that there has been positive aspects of the war that I found. Because of the time restriction, I chose to focus on the findings that I found more interesting. And in part two, I'll discuss some background information so you all can understand my project better. So, if you don't know who Bosnians are, I will give some background information so you guys are caught up with their recent history. Bosniaks are a Slavic ethnic group from Bosnia, and three other ethnic groups reside in this land. Here are the Bosnians in green, the Croats in blue, and the Serbs in orange. During the latter years of Yugoslavian regime, because of the nationalist idea of Greater Serbia, a series of independent movements started in the 90s. After Slovenia's successful secession from the Union, both Bosnia and Croatia attempted to leave the Union as well. But this led to one of the deadliest events in the 20th century, a four-year conflict resulting in the killings of some 100,000 Bosnians, displacement of over 2 million Bosnians, and numerous war crimes. And this should give you context of who Bosnians are. Since you all are caught up with their history, let's jump to the next part where I will talk about my theoretical approach. For you guys to understand my research, I want to explain the anthropological approach I've taken. In my research, I looked into the idea of transgenerational trauma. Most of the previous research done on trauma about Bosnians has usually been done through a psychological or clinical point of view. From my research, I've seen that the Western psychological POV of trauma has been seen as problematic. Derek Summerfield argues that the clinical definition of PTSD by the DSM has a very broad checklist that generates large overestimates of numbers needing treatment. That is why Bosnians who are diagnosed with PTSD should not be viewed as incapable members of the community. Additionally, previous studies done on Holocaust survivors can be applied to Bosnians, as both of these groups have been through similar experiences such as war, concentration camps, and genocide. One thing that was interesting to me was the idea of silence. For Holocaust survivors, their silence impeded their ability to heal, mourn, and integrate. Yale Daniele calls this phenomenon the conspiracy of silence. Academically, this relationship has been described as a non-verbal agreement between the generations, where parents do not tell and children do not ask. This silence has also affected the second generation's development, such as emotions of anger and guilt, which are apparent among Bosnian Americans. Since we know the basics of our theory, let's look at what some participants told me. Stories tell us important information about one's identity and personality. In my interviews, I asked my participants questions about their parents, their parents' stories, and how the war affected them. Without forcing them, many of them opened up and told me various stories. One story that captured my attention was about the participant herself. She remembers as a kid, whenever her family would drive over a bridge, her mother would cover her face. Growing up, she didn't know why, but she felt her mother's discomfort every time they drove over bridges. She has always asked about this, but her mother would never tell why and tell surface level reasons like, I have a fear of bridges, or I have a fear of heights. One day when she was all grown up, her mom told the real story of how her cousin was shot and fell down a bridge when they were trying to escape the war. 
Because of this, she developed an immense fear of water and bridges. Things like these are very common, like fear of fireworks and loud noises. When a child grows up seeing their parents be afraid and discomforted by mundane things, they grow up not understanding why their parents act the way they do. And in the next section, we will delve more into the emotions that arise from trauma and war. Continuing from our last video, some participants saw negative emotions such as anger, sadness and guilt transmitted from their parents. One participant from my study said, and some anger. My dad was pretty angry. He's pretty angry. Like he has some unprocessed things. His poor anger management rubbed off me a bit. Another participant told me this story. She remembers as a kid, her father would sit down in front of the TV alone and drink. He would drink a lot, would get loud, and his anger would show. One thing that captured her interest was whenever her dad would drink, he would watch old footages and documentaries about the Bosnian War. From the back of the living room, she would see her dad relive the war, such as the genocides, the concentration camps, and all the atrocities of the war. That is why she would never ask her dad about it, because she knew that it brought him memories filled with anger and sadness. Even though the first generation did not want to show these sides of themselves, in one way or another, the second generation saw these. Just like in the previous part, the idea of conspiracy of silence comes up again and again with Bosnian Americans. So, what have we learned? Through these short TikToks, I have presented two main themes. One, that there is a transgenerational trauma passed from first generation to the second generation in some forms, which includes the idea of conspiracy of silence. And two, aside from trauma, there seems to be a transmission of negative emotions, such as anger, guilt, and sadness. But why is this important? This study is relevant to the fields of migration, diaspora, and psychocultural studies, especially on individuals whose parents collectively witnessed a form of trauma. Also, Bosnian Americans are an under-resourced population in the field of diaspora studies. Specifically, the studies on the second generation is very limited. This research is one of the first studies done on the second generation Bosnian Americans that delves into the idea of transgenerational trauma and transmission of emotions. Lastly, I would like to thank Robert Lemelson for providing me a grant to do this research. I would also like to thank Dr. Lori Hart and Dr. John Chiksos for being my faculty advisors and helping me through this process. I would also like to thank my TAs and professors, Dr. Garo, Dr. Holland, Dr. Toyota, Dr. Leisure, and Dr. Lloyd for being there for me. I would also like to thank my participants and the institutions of UCLA and the Center for Bosnian Studies at Fontbonne University. I would also like to thank these people, my cohort, my Lemelson cohort, Lemelson forever. Lastly, I won't be here if it wasn't for you guys, so I would like to thank you all for watching my presentations and TikToks. Don't forget to follow and like, and see you in tomorrow's video, where I will talk about the story behind how and why Derek Friedman criticized Margaret Mead's book, Coming of Age in Samoa, 40 years after Mead's death. See you guys tomorrow.